My name is Phil Getz. Welcome to Texas Media Systems. I'm joined by Mr. Stephen Mick and the new Panasonic HPX 250 camera. And the camera came yesterday and we passed it out to Stephen to take a look at. And what are your impressions on it so far after seeing it for the first time? Well, I mean, you know, I think as everybody knows, the, the key things about this particular camera are the zoom range on the lens. It's a something like a 28 millimeter to 600 millimeter full frame 35 equivalent lens. Uh, I mean, that's one of the biggest features of the camera, plus the ABC Intra. Uh, it's the first time that Panasonic has put ABC Intra into a kind of camcorder uh, format, and you know, I think the combination is is really a pretty amazing. You know, I noticed you were surprised by the lens a little bit when you went to screw a 72 millimeter yeah. filter onto it. Sure. I mean, I think for the for the zoom range. You know, I was assuming it'd be an 82 millimeter filter size, but I mean, it, the lens assembly itself is not nearly as big as I thought it would be, and I don't think it's as big as actually I, I think I remember seeing at NAB. So I know there's it definitely seems like there's been some you know some, some modifications since NAB and some some improvements. This is not a hundred percent. Uh, finished camera right here that we're looking at so this is a prototype still so expected delivery is happening soon so that's one uh, quick note to make but on the lens now or I should say on the front of the camera you've got three rings here yeah yeah and I'll talk about some of the stuff that, that I noticed um, you know like with all the the Panasonic camcorders of this of this style it's got a removable uh, lens shade which is nice and pop off the lens cap there so you can see the lens. So you can see the three different rings here uh, for focus, iris, and zoom. Um, focus, zoom, and iris. Uh, also on the side you've got your neutral density filters built in. Uh, it's interesting because it, it seems like it's electronically engaged. Uh, it, it does seem like there's an optical ND filter in there but it's not like the, you know, the uh, AF100 for example where you you can slide see the switch. The intermediate you can see, yeah, you, yeah. So it's, it's, into place. it's interesting to see how that was uh, implemented. Focus assist is the magnification focus assist, which is you know common to kind of expanded people focus. It jumps yep. you in farther. You check focus, press it yep. again, and it jumps you back out. Yeah, which is Great. really nice to have. Uh, the typical, you know, a typical Panasonic controls. Um, if you've used a HVX or an HPX, a lot of this will be very familiar to you. Great um, gain, uh, your white balance, all of that is. Essentially, as it you know, as it has been uh, for a lot of their other cameras, uh, pop open the LCD. The LCD screen is really nice. I noticed that when I was doing some some testing with it. It's a color reproduction of it. It's really really nice. Have you looked at a HPX 370 in full sunlight, kind of off axis, kind of looked at that LCD because it just kind of it's the same one, mm -hmm. thing as as borrowed from that. So you can actually see quite a bit of resolution in full sunlight mm -hmm. if you if you're kind of off angle a little bit. So that's yeah. a great that's a great feature to have. Yeah, it's really nice. The viewfinder is really nice as well. I find myself using the LCD a lot more just because it is you know, such a nice LCD screen, it's, you know, just viewability of it's great. And then you have a built-in, basically, an equivalent of an EVF on it there, mm -hmm. so your viewfinder sure. is built in, ready yep. to go, so that's not an add-on option. Yep. It's always hanging out there with you. Yeah, there's, you know, on the back here you've got your P2, uh, P2 slots. There's two P2 slots plus an SD card slot for saving scene files, just as you've been able to with, with some of the other Panasonic cameras. Um, pop this up. Uh, you've got your USB, you've got your headphones, HDMI, um, remote. I believe it'll use the same remotes for lens and zoom as uh, previous Panasonic cameras. Uh, I didn't have one to test, so. Kind of the really handle controls. To yeah, yeah, the stuff made by, uh, by VeraZoom and mm -hmm. Liebeck, I think, makes one. Um, then down here, you've got your SDI, um, and what's this one? Time code. Uh, DV. How about that? It's got like a little FireWire DV port. So I'm not sure what, you know, I would use that for. But. FireWire is interesting sometimes with folks who are streaming and things like that, so uh -huh. yeah, running to a computer, so perhaps that's what they might have been thinking. And on the battery, this uses the same battery as the HPX 200s and the HPX 170s, which is wonderful because folks already have those batteries, and on some of the ABC cams, there's been 
some third party manufacturers making batteries that haven't really been fully compatible. So it looks like this being a, a professional camera, it's going to stick to the mm -hmm. same lineage of batteries, which is helpful. Yeah, and around here on the side, you've got, let me close this, you've got a composite uh, video out. So, I mean, really, you've got just about every conceivable input output that I think you'd want uh, or that you could expect on a camera like this. Now, those controls, of course, are going to be behind all of that is the ABC Intra mm -hmm. that you mentioned. So now we are at full 1920 by 1080, 10-bit, mm -hmm. which is going to be different from the original specifications of, of P2, which are maybe, is it 960 by 720 or? Sure, that's you know, the back in the DVC Pro HD days. Um, there was some voodoo magic used to, uh, you know, to, to create a 1920 by 1080 image. Uh, I mean, and, and for, for, for what it's worth, I will say that looking at DVC Pro HD footage that I've shot three and four years ago, uh, it holds up well. It's amazing footage. It looks great. This camera does have ABC intro, which is full 1080, uh, a, a full 1080 image, 10-bit um, 422. Uh, that's really what makes, I think, the ABC intro codec special is the is the 10 bit 422 nature of it you know a lot of cameras have moved towards ABC HD a lot of DSLRs obviously built around the H264 codec uh, which is great for certain applications but for maximum quality whether it's full detail whether it's um, colored gradients skies that green kind of screen thing. is green one screen. that you hear a lot absolutely I mean any, any place where you need the maximum color accuracy and rendition the 10 bit 422 is going to give that to you now one feature that's been added to this camera that had been kind of from the from the consumer world is the optical image stabilization mm -hmm. so what what does that mean or how does that change the way people will look at this camera or work with it with it having that function? Well, I mean, optical image stabilization is, is a feature that they've had on these camcorders for a number of years, back to the HVX200 DVX. Uh, and basically, you know, my understanding of what it does, and I'm not an engineer, uh, is it, you know, it, it, it moves the lens elements to compensate for motion. So obviously, if you're shooting it on a tripod, turn it off. But if you're shooting, say you're, you're shooting in the field, I do a lot of shooting out on the water on boats, uh, situations like that, the OIS can really save shots because you're constantly moving. You know, and obviously if the camera jerks, there's only so much that the OIS is going to be able to compensate for. But if you've got motion and you're trying to track a subject, uh, a little bit of motion, the OIS will really help stabilize that shot and make it usable. Tell us about your scene file. So you had a little bit of time to build up a scene file that you wanted to use with it, and what did you do? What did you change on it? Well, basically, the, the imaging block from the 250 is, my understanding, uh, the same or very similar to the 370. Uh, it's the same chipset, uh, and so the scene file that I've loaded is identical to a scene file that I'd used on the 370, uh, which basically just tries to to mimic, to some extent, the, the range of film and give you kind of a, a flatter look for, for grading. Uh, and that's one of the things I think is interesting about 10-bit interesting about 422 is that you know, a lot of people will shoot flat on DSLRs or these ABC HD cameras. And I've always kind of felt the opposite. Like, a camera like this gives you so much room in post to grade that that, to me, is when you want to shoot flat. Because I can take the ABC intercodec and I can push it so much farther uh, in color correction than I ever could any kind of an ABC cam or H.264 based codec. So having all that data there is one big thing. Having it in a, in a, smaller, in a smaller camera. Now, I didn't know who would be interested in seeing footage from this camera because it's like we've seen the HPX 370 so a lot of that footage is out there already so I think the real exciting things about this camera is the same quality that smaller price point being more inexpensive are the main things that people are going to be interested in with this camera. Sure, absolutely. I mean, I, and there's great, some great footage out there now that I've seen from the 250. So I don't think the footage is a question. I mean, the codec has been proven for you know, certainly a number of years now. Uh, it's really the form factor that I think is, uh, is pretty amazing with this camera. And to still have HD SDI, HDMI, to have you know, time, uh, you know, time code capability, uh, Genlock. I mean, there's a lot of features on this camera that you know, are, are 
impressive given the size. I mean, obviously, it you know it records to P2 cards. It's an AVC entry camera. I think Panasonic's been fairly clear on the fact that at least for the you know near term, AVC entry is a professional codec and will record to professional media, which they consider P2 to be. Um, so, you know, some people will not be you know pleased about the fact that they can't get SD cards for AVC entry camera, but get over it, that's just the way it is. Now, one last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, we had talked some about shooting on, for example, a set of Nikon Primes. So you have a set of Nikon Primes you're shooting with. They've got 77 millimeter in the front for all the filters and matte boxes you're using. They've got a ring built in for follow focus. Now, that was a system that you'd taken out with and you'd worked with in the past. Sure. And you decided to move away from it, but I just was wondering what your reasoning was was for that, and I think it had to do with your shooting style. Well, you know, I think that there are, there's been so many changes in technology in terms of cameras and what you can get out of out of certain cameras. And I mean, honestly, the, the Canon 5D Mark II started a lot of the, the interchangeable lens, large sensor craze. And those cameras can do great things, and there are certain applications that they're perfect for. A lot of what I tend to shoot is travel. Uh, a lot of it's in environments that are not friendly to, you know, to... Crew? To, well, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, there's a lot of situations where it's just me. And, right. And, you know, I, I've gone from shooting with DVX to the HVX to the HPX-170. I've shot with EX-1, 370. I've shot with just about all sorts of different cameras. And, you know, when you're in an environment that is tough on gear, the, one of the last things you want is an interchangeable lens camera because the more bits and pieces you have, the more that can go wrong. And when you're changing lenses in the jungle, you know, there's a lot of bad things that can happen. So, you know, I've, I've shot projects in some extreme places with the Canon 7D, and it was great, and the footage looks fabulous. Uh, and I've shot, I've shot projects on interchangeable lens cameras where I know I've missed shots because of the shallow depth of field, because you just don't have, always have the luxury of time to, to lock in your focus if, you know, a fish is jumping up out of the water. You've got to get it when you can get it. So, again, there's things that I think that these camcorders are perfect for, and I think combining this type of a camera with a 5D Mark II is about the best combination that I think you can get because it gives you the ability to get, you know, truly broadcast quality codec footage uh, from a camera like this. Plus, you can mate it with the shallow depth of field, you know. What people would consider the very cinema-like qualities of of DSLRs, and, and I the think range of lens elements that comes with it, absolutely. and the fields of yep. view that also come into the equation. Yeah, and I mean honestly, you know, th there are creative possibilities that those interchangeable lens cameras give you that that a camera like this doesn't, a and 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 vice versa. I mean, I think that there's things that both cameras do very well, and the idea that one camera can do everything, I think, is is foolish and you know, you can make one camera do everything, but it won't do everything well. Um, so the, one of the things that I think is amazing about cameras like the 250 is how much technology they're able to put in a camera this size. I mean, the lens assembly and the images are amazing. Uh, it's got, you know, the focus assist capabilities. It's got the codec. I mean, everything that, that you need to go out and produce, uh, you know, wonderful content is here on this camera. Well, I appreciate your time talking about it, Stephen. I appreciate everybody viewing, and thanks for watching.